Welcome to our special service tonight. Now, this service or this message is not just for the day of Thanksgiving or the season of Thanksgiving because we're called to give thanks in all things and for all things. And we're going to get into that. But I want to share tonight or whenever you're watching this that God is giving you an invitation to the office of Thanksgiving. God is inviting you with an RSVP request to the office of Thanksgiving. What is the office of Thanksgiving? Well, I'm glad you asked. I am David Harabedian. My lovely wife, Joanna, she is womanning the camera. And she's saying hello, there's the Queen's Wave. So we are the Herobedians, virtualchurchmedia.com. You can also download our mobile app at virtualchurchmedia.com. And I received a phone call from one of our partners and friends today. And he said, my wife loves the mobile app. She loves Joanna's worship music, being able to have a one-year Bible reading program on the phone and have a Spanish translation, an audio Bible, and the podcast, and all the books, all paid for by the friends and partners of Virtual Church Media. So we get these reports in. I just want to share with you, if you haven't gotten the mobile app, go to the Android or the Apple Store and download it, virtualchurch.media, or go to virtualchurchmedia.com and click on a link there. But this was 1998. I was incarcerated in a prison in Springfield, Missouri, at the Federal Medical Center for Federal Prisons there, Prisoners there. It's in my book, Jet Ride Journey to Freedom. But I want to share with you about the Office of Thanksgiving when I got my invitation to the Office of Thanksgiving. And that's where this revelation came from, was in a prison cell. The word, the prisoners may be bound, but the word of God is not bound. God is so unlimited in what he can do. So strap your seatbelts on. This is going to be exciting. As you learn what I learned in 1998 and have been able to practice that on a regular basis and seeing God respond when we respond. Draw near to God and he will draw near unto you. So I had three dreams. The first one came at 3 a.m. The second one came at 4 a.m. The third one came at 5 a.m. And at 6 a.m., I was suddenly awakened. The first dream was this. I was sitting on a park bench and two women approached me. They had a presence of God about them. They were very uh, executive in nature. One of them had a clipboard in hand. The other one was assisting the primary. And she came up to me and she stood over me with the, the clipboard in hand and she looked at me and she says, the Lord has invited you at 6 a.m. to the office of Thanksgiving. Very, very uh, respectful and firm. And I said, the office of Thanksgiving? She said, yes, the office of Thanksgiving, 6 a.m. He'll see you there. And she walked off. And I woke up and I looked and it was 3 a.m. At 4 a.m., I had the same dream in a different form. And I saw the same two women the one with the clipboard, but they approached me from a different side and I was in a different environment. And she said, this is to remind you that you have an appointment and invitation with the Lord at 6 a.m. at the office of Thanksgiving. And I said, okay. And I woke up 4 a.m. The third one was at 5 a.m. Same thing. This is to remind you that you have an invitation and an appointment with the Lord at 6 a.m. at the office of Thanksgiving. He'll be waiting for you there. And I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and I woke up and I looked, it was 5 a.m. And at 6 a.m., I woke up straight up. My eyes popped open. I was wide awake. And it was still dark in the prison where I was at. And the lights didn't come on till 7 a.m. And so what happened was I, I began to thank God. And I thought, I better get on my knees so I got out of bed, I got onto my knees, and I put my hands up, and I knelt over my bed, and I began to thank God for the things that he had done for me. 
And I realized this was give thanks in all things, give thanks for all things. We enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We enter his courts with praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 100 verse 4. And so I began to thank God for all the things that I was aware of that he'd done. And this lasted 90 seconds to two minutes. And I was out of things to thank him for. And I thought, what do I do now? I'm just waiting on the Lord. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit brought into remembrance something else that the Lord had done for me. And I thought, oh, I never thought, yeah, I, I, he did do that. So I thanked him for that. So I got to the end of myself and my natural reasoning in two minutes. And then another thing that God had done for me was brought into my remembrance. He brings all things into remembrance. And I began to thank him for that. But this time of thanksgiving at the office of thanksgiving on my knees, not with theology, but neology on my knees in prayer before God, took on a different atmosphere. And there was a Holy Spirit empowerment that came for intercession at this point. And then I began to pray and thank him and a joy came on me and an appreciation and I began to thank him from my heart not just my head and then he would bring another thing then all of a sudden revelation began to come on things where he had protected me where I was at a different place in the prison when something horrible had happened with other inmates and I wasn't present when that occurred people got locked up put in the hole there's worse things that happened but God protected me during those times because I was quickened to go one direction instead of another suddenly and I wasn't there. I was at the I wasn't at the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. I was diverted away. And it's not that prison was easy, but grace enabled it to be easier because I didn't get caught up in the messes that other people were caught up in because God had redirected my past. And I thought, God save me might be you were quickened to slow down and you didn't know why and the other cars went past and they got a ticket and you just took your foot off the gas. It's not that you weren't an offender, but it was by the grace of God that you didn't get that ticket or you were quickened not to park or you chose to take a different route home and it saved you time or other people got sick and you didn't and nobody knows why you didn't when they did and you were at the same location or maybe you survived something that other people didn't survive it's not that you haven't been through things but you began to give him thanks in all things you began to give him thanks for all things and god loves a thankful heart anyway this continued on and the holy spirit just continued to quicken me and all of a sudden he began to show me i went into a state of almost a, a visionary state where i'd see film clips or he brings things into remembrance or he'd show me a top-down approach, and I began to say, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. It was like praising him, like the seraphims went around the throne of God. In Isaiah chapter 6, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, for the whole earth is full of his glory. And I believe the seraphims that go around the throne of God in Isaiah 6, the six-winged angels, with two they cover their face, with two they cover their feet, and with two wings, they do fly. I believe every time they go around the throne of grace, they get a revelation of who God is. He shows them something. He pulls back his coat and he shows them another facet of his glory. And they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And in a smaller dimension, in a smaller measure, while I'm in that prison cell, on my knees next to my bed while people are still asleep or going to breakfast and it's still dark. Thank you, Jesus. God, thank you for this. Thank you for that. And this went on and all of a sudden the lights came on in the dorm where I was at in that prison in Building 9 of a medical center for federal prisoners in Springfield, Missouri, 19. 
88, and as the lights came on, I realized it's 7 a.m. I got to the end of my Thanksgiving with my cognitive brain, but then the Holy Spirit began to show me other things for 58 more minutes. God's done so much for you. Wow. Mm. He's done so much for me. He saved us. The angels have been at work. The heavenlies are always shifting in your behalf. God is always turning things together for good for you because you love him and you're called according to his purpose. There's going to be a leapfrog anointing that's going to come where other people have been promoted that really, just to be honest, they didn't do the right things, but they got promoted. It was almost like a fraternity or a sorority or they were part of the club and they got promoted not based upon performance or integrity, but they got promoted. And you're thinking to yourself, I did the right thing. They didn't do the right thing and they got promoted and I didn't. But I'm gonna share something with you. The same people that got promoted the wrong way, some of them are gonna be freed from their duties. You're gonna literally not just get promoted into those positions. Some of them are gonna remain in those positions, but you're gonna get the leapfrog and when you need to get promoted above them. And I'm gonna share with you the secret of how to get promoted in the Lord. The Bible says that we're not to, you know, servants obey your masters, not with eye service as men pleases. I didn't know what that meant when I read it in the Bible. But when we are servants or we're employees and we have a boss or an overseer, our job is to do all of our work as unto the Lord, not unto the man. And if we do all of our work as unto the Lord, our reward comes from the Lord. But if we do all of our work as unto the man, we'll be disappointed. Or the woe man, right? So whoever's in authority, they have been given God, given authority. Hebrews 13, obey those that are in authority over you. And as we obey them, we really are obeying the Lord. And God waits. He waits. He waits. He waits. And he waits till we're faithful. And then, boom, he'll cause us to be promoted. Promotion cometh not from the east or from the west. But promotion cometh from the Lord. When we're faithful with little, God gives us authority over much. Back to the office of Thanksgiving. The, the lights came on 7 a.m. at the Springfield Medical Center for Federal Prisoners. And I realized what, what just happened. It was two minutes after 6 and I began to thank him and now it's 7 a.m. I didn't fall asleep. He just kept showing me more. And instead of me being tired when I got up, I was invigorated. I had a supernatural impartation of the presence of the living God. The anointing of the Holy Spirit had come in. And when we'll rise early in the morning to praise him and to thank him, he'll do far more for us than if we slept with Ativan at night or some other type of thing. Now, I'm not recommending you do any of that stuff. I'm just giving that illustration. I probably prophetically picked up on the drug that a person's taking, which will often happen, some Xanax, some Ativan, or whatever it is, and some melatonin. And, and so God wants to give you perfect peace. He will keep those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Isaiah 26, 3. And he giveth his beloved sleep psalms 127 2. you don't need a pill bottle you need to crawl into the lap of the heavenly father and one of the ways that happens is going in response to the invitation you've received today to the office of thanksgiving here's what happened so i got up i went to breakfast and when I got there, they, they closed at like 10 minutes until after 7. So I, I rushed down there and I, I got some breakfast. And a friend of mine came up and said, Oh, we made some special items. I kind of like missed the breakfast. But one of the inmate workers came up and they had made, with the uh, oversight and the authority of the, the, the guard, they were able to make a certain thing. And he came out and gave them to me. So there was only about four people on the whole prison compound of 850 that got these things. And I was one of them because when we thank God for something, he begins to add things unto us. Have you ever given somebody something like, oh, thanks. You know, they're kind of like, eh, or they, oh, okay. And they walk off. You're like, oh, 
well, they didn't really care about that. You don't have a desire to do it for them again. But when you give them something, they're like, oh my gosh, you have no idea. I'm so appreciative of this. Makes you want to do something for them again because of their thanksgiving and appreciation. They receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save their soul. How blessed it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Blessed are those who do hunger and thirst after righteousness. We shall be filled. There's something about hungering, thirsting, giving thanks and appreciation that moves the heart of God and the hand of God in our behalf to do it again and again. And again, he takes it from great. He takes us from grace to grace, and faith to faith, and glory to glory. As he causes the path to grow brighter and brighter, as we walk with him on the road of righteousness, and we keep our eyes on the sea walker, and we're not moved by the winds and the waves of adversity, but we're focused. Great peace have those which love the law of God. Psalms 119, 165, and nothing shall offend them. When you have thanksgiving. It will remove jealousy. When you have thanksgiving, it will remove frustration. When you have thanksgiving, it will remove bitterness. It will purge it right out of your body. The illustration I'm seeing is a, is a dirty glass and you put it under the sink and you begin to turn on the water and it goes in and the dirt kind of floats up to the top, a milky, you know, from whatever it is and starts to bubble out. And before too long, that river of living water that flows from the faucet will purge out all those things. And that's what thanksgiving does to our soul. And the things that began to happen that day were so supernatural. I went in for lunch and as I'm coming through the line, the inmate that gave me the hamburger and fries, he gave me two burgers. And he doubled the fries. And I'm looking at him, and he just looked at me and smiled. It's like his hand just did it. And I left with the double portion, and the guard kind of looks down and just kind of looks like, and he looked away. And I come back, and I've got twice as much. I want to share a verse with you. And this is so pivotal, this verse of Scripture. Do you remember the ten, le ten lepers that came to Jesus? Mm -hmm. The ten lepers in Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. I'm going to read this from the uh, New King James Version. It says this. Now it happened as Jesus went to Jerusalem. It happened as Jesus went to Jerusalem. He passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Verse 12. Luke chapter 7, verse 12. Then as Jesus entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And I want you to hear this. Leprosy was contagious. Lepers had to stay away from other people that didn't have leprosy. It was against the law. They could be stoned to death if they came and got too close to people that had no leprosy. So lepers had to get together and hang out together because they already had this disease. And lepers literally don't have the ability in certain body parts, they lose feeling. So what happens is they can't feel that body part, so then they'll end up slamming something in a door, stubbing a toe, and it doesn't heal. So that, that, that extremity, that dexterity, or that, 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 I'm trying to think in Spanish, dedo, the finger, it, it will yeah. fall off. And so they start to miss body parts. And so lepers don't just have these oozing sores. And this it's a really horrible situation. So there's leper colonies today. And uh, we were with uh, Heidi Baker uh, about two years ago, and she was sharing about how God had given her anointing for lepers. And when she smells leprosy, she gets excited in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And she goes and finds the leper because he's highlighted that, that aroma to her. And she'll go find the leper and she'll grab his oozing hands and she'll stomp on the tops of his feet and she'll hear the squish and the leper screams in pain and she gets excited because she knows he can't feel but the fact that he felt means God just healed him and the leper will get healed we were just in Italy my wife and I we were in uh, uh, we were in Rome we were in uh, Foligno. Foligno we were in Spello and then 
What we didn't know is we were about 20 minutes away from Assisi. And St. Francis of Assisi had a real heart of appreciation and thanksgiving. He started the Franciscan monks. They took vows to poverty. And really, St. Francis of Assisi came from wealth. And he gave up his inheritance. His father was into shipping and, 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 and transport. And so he was in line to inherit a tremendous amount of money in business. But he gave it up and he took a vow to poverty for the sake of Christ. But one of the things he didn't care for was lepers. And as I talked about leprosy and people losing extremities and oozing leprosy, you may not have had a good feeling in, in your, your mindset or stomach. And so he did not like lepers. And so the Lord spoke to him one day, I want you to go kiss that man on his jaw where the jaw had been eaten up and he was missing part of the jaw from the leprosy. And he said, Lord, I don't want to do it. He says, I want you to kiss him in the name of Christ for me as if you're kissing me on the cheek. We do it under the least of these, my brethren. You've done it under me. Matthew 25, 31 through 46, the sheep and the goats. This is how you can tell a sheep from a goat based upon what they did and did not do. Love is an action. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love will reach beyond what's rational at times. And God told him to do it. And God told him to do it. <coughs> Remember, he was sent. He's not one who just went. I'm not saying not to use wisdom in the Lord. So he went and he got the grace in front of people and he went and he I kiss you brother in the name of Christ and he kissed him on the cheek and the glory of God came in and regenerated his face before everyone's eyes and that didn't just change that leper who was healed of leprosy and gave him his citizenship back in a society it also changed Frank St. Francis of Assisi and he began to say we will no longer call them lepers we will call them our brothers and our sisters and we will honor them and the love of Christ. Now, i, I got to share this with you. St. Francis of Assisi was a true man of God. The Pope of the day didn't really get along with St. Francis. They had different, maybe, agendas, even though they both named the name of Christ. And maybe you're with some people that don't really share your agenda because you have this compassion in you. Or maybe you're someone who doesn't share the compassion of somebody with heaven's agenda. The office of thanksgiving will change that. Let me share with you what happened. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us, have pity on us. Now, the reason they had to stand at a distance and cry out, because if they got near somebody, by law, they would have to yell, unclean, unclean, I'm a leper, unclean. Can you imagine being in a society where you don't get a hug? You can't shake hands with anybody. You have to social distance because you have the virus. And they can stone you. And if a child gets too close to you, son, daughter, get away, that's a leper. And they have to, this is the social outcast of the day. It's like being a Jew during the times of Hitler, having to wear a gold star and they called you vermin and put you into the ovens saying you were going to go for a shot. He's keeping it real. The office of thanksgiving begins to change this. Listen to this. And when he saw him, he said, "Go." He said, Master, have pity on us, the 10. When he saw them, Luke chapter 17, verse 14, when he saw them, Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priests and it came to pass, as they obeyed this instruction from Jesus, and they went to go obey the law to go show themselves to the priest, as they were going, they were healed or cleansed. They got healed and cleansed at the word of the Lord, and they went from social outcasts to being restored. They could go home to their families no longer lepers. I once was blind, but now I see. Once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was a leper, but now 
I am healed and whole. I get to go home and be part of community again. I'll hug a family member for the first time in X amount of years. That's the power of God for restoration. But remember, we're talking about the invitation to the office of Thanksgiving, that when you RSVP and you show up and get on your knees before God and begin to thank him for the things he has done, and then there's that lull, that pause, when you or I get to the end of ourselves, what happens is the Holy Spirit begins. And when he begins, it's true intercession. It's true thanksgiving. And he called out in a loud voice, Jesus have mercy on us. And when they saw him, they said, go your, when he saw them, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15, one of the 10, one of the 10, when he saw that he was healed, he came back praising God in a loud voice. You know, only about one out of 10 comes back and gives thanks to God for what he's done. Mm. God's done so much, but only about a time actually come back and give him thanks. They're just happy they're out of their pain. They're just happy they got the financial breakthrough. They're just happy the wife came back. They're just happy the child got on drugs. But do they really come back and thank God or they're just happy they're out of their problem? Biblically, about one out of ten will, and I want to share with you, when you have Thanksgiving, it triggers something. It unlocks the next level. It creates the leapfrog anointing that causes you to rise above your fellows. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back, verse 15, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. He was a half-breed. He was half-Jew. He was half-Gentile. He was not received by Jews. He was not received by Gentiles. And sometimes when you're rejected by your culture, you're rejected by your people, you're rejected in society, when Jesus calls you and does something for you, you're far more thankful because to much is forgiven, much is indeed loved. Jesus asked him this in verse 17, Luke 17, 17. We're not all 10 cleansed. Where are the other nine? Mm. Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? This Samaritan, this half-breed, half-Jew. I'm not saying this in a derogatory way. I'm trying to paint hermeneutically and homiletically the culture of the day. Then Jesus said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you whole. I want to give you an illustration here. The word whole is Strong's. 4982 in the Koine Greek language that the New Testament is written in. It's the word sozo. It means to save, keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction, to keep one from injury or peril, to save a suffering one from perishing, one suffering from disease, to make well heal, restore, to help, to preserve one who is in danger of destruction, to save or rescue. To save in the technical, biblical sense, negatively to deliver from the penalties of messianic judgment, to save from the evils which obstruct the reception of the messianic deliverance. And it is from a primary source. Contra anyway, my point is this. When we come back and thank Jesus for what he's done, we don't just get healed, we get made whole. Spirit, soul, and body. The Bible talks about in a passage where Many came to him who were sick, were halt, were blind, were lame, and were maimed. And he prayed for them and they were made whole. That man was St. Francis of Assisi 800 years ago when St. Francis kissed him in the name of Christ on his leprous cheek. He had a regenerative, recreative miracle that so many people saw and reported that he regenerated and was made sozo whole. The other nine that got their miracle and went home, if they were missing body parts, they still missed them. But this one, if he was missing any, he was made whole. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men 
couldn't put Humpty back together again as the nursery rhyme goes. But do you know, it always confused me. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. But Humpty never called upon the king. And when we call upon the king himself instead of the king's men, the doctors, the lawyers, the psychologists, the psychiatrists, the surgeons, the psychotherapists, the pill bottles, the potions, the lotions, the supplements, the modalities, when we go to the king himself, he'll make us whole when we thank him for what he's done. And we will go from grace to grace and faith to faith. The Bible says that we are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name, Psalm 100, verse 4. The word thanksgiving means confession, thanksgiving to praise God, thanksgiving in songs of liturgical worship, hymn, praise, thanksgiving, choir procession, or line of company, a thank offering sacrifice, thanksgiving, or confession. When we thank God, something shifts. It changes the atmosphere. And when we give him everything that we've got, that we know that he has done, like I did on that cold prison cell floor in 1998 at the Medical Center for Federal Prisoners when I had those three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back dreams being invited by two women, one with a clipboard. You're invited to the office of thanksgiving. The Lord looks forward to seeing you. It changed things for me. And God gave me a joy through those 20 years of prison that only comes supernaturally. Guards would ask me, how are you doing today? Excellent, sir. What's up, Herobedian? Good, thanks. What's, what's up with you? How are you doing? Excellent. Matter of fact, I would take my picture when they would give me a new uh, updated picture when I would arrive at a facility or leave at a facility or have to upgrade my, my, my ID card. I would smile for the camera. <laughs> and when a guard, give me your card, Herobedian 27530 0 4 I read your thing. Give me your, your ID card. They'd grab it. They'd be angry, this and that. They'd look at it and they'd be like, what are you smiling about? I said, do you really want to know? I've got that joy, joy, joy down in my heart. Where? Down in... Here, get out of here. Get out of here. See, joy is a weapon. It will insulate you like oil and cause you to slip through the enemy's hands. But you don't just get the joy often without the thanksgiving. Because when we thanked him and we come back, he re-oils us. Do you know that sheep in Israel, shepherds, would take olive oil, and they still do today, and they rub the head of the sheep. And the reason they rub the head sheep with oil, because flies come and they try to land on the sheep's head and they try to lay larva in the sheep's head. And the larva then embeds down into the skin. And when the flies hatch, it's in the sheep or the lamb's hair and into its brain with flies and larvae in their brain. But if you anoint their head with oil, the flies don't land. They can't lay the eggs. It protects and insulates. And when we go to the office of Thanksgiving as sheep, thanking God for what he's done, he anoints our head afresh with oil. Psalms 92, 10, your head shall be anointed with fresh oil. I will exalt the Lord. He'll exalt my horn as the horn of a unicorn. He'll anoint my head with fresh oil. God wants to anoint you today for Thanksgiving. He wants to anoint you to give thanks 365, 24-7. It's a year-round thing. You know what the difference is between a successful person in the business world and an unsuccessful one? Simply this. The successful one does daily what the unsuccessful one does only occasionally. The successful person does daily what the unsuccessful person does only occasionally. I just saw a picture of a friend of mine and his wife and he's in great physical shape and 
I was thinking, man, he's really in good shape. And they had a picture of him on social media and he had his shirt off and it wasn't, you know, a wrong picture, but it was just like, this is how I've honored my body. I'm like, man, that guy's chiseled. He's in great shape and he's healthy. And I thought, man, that guy's really dedicated. See, he does daily what I only do occasionally in that area. <laughs> That's why he has what he has. Could I have that? Sure. If I wanted it, I could have it because God's no respecter of persons. You could have it. You can have anything you set your heart to desire if you'll do it daily with discipline instead of just occasionally. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. So we're going to close tonight and I'm going to encourage you to go to the Lord in the office of thanksgiving as we close out we're going to close out in prayer, but it's going to be in thanksgiving. And I'm going to lead you like the Holy Spirit led me with that invitation of the triple trifecta dream in 1998 of an invitation to the office of thanksgiving. The Bible says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, 1 Corinthians 4.16, I believe, that we might obtain mercy and grace in the time of need. And let us be those that are not like the nine lepers that went on with their healing miracle, but the one leper, the tenth, the tithe, that came back and gave him thanks for what he's already done in the past. That triggers, do it again, do it again, do it again. Matthew 6.33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, and I just want to say this, the king himself. And he will remember you as you remember him. I'm going to ask my lovely wife to give me a communion. We're going to do communion today. And we're going to do it out of thanks. And Jesus said on the day, the night that he would be betrayed, they were at the last supper. It was the last meal he would eat in preparation for his crucifixion. Or he was hung up for our hang-ups. And he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. He was bleeding from a beating. There were stripes upon his back. He bore it out of love for you and me. Down the Via Dolorosa, called the way of suffering. Down the Via Dolorosa, called the way of suffering. Came a man called the Messiah, Christ the King. And he bore it every step for those who cried out for his death. Down the Via Dolorosa, called the way of suffering. A man called the Messiah, Christ the King, bore the beating bore the stripes upon his back, the crown upon his thorn, the crown of thorns upon his head, and the shame, not for himself, but for you and for me. Let's give him thanks. Let's partake of the body of Christ. If you have any sort of element, you have crackers, bread, wine, grape juice, chips, chips, God will honor it because he can take water and turn it into wine. You can use water. One of the greatest encounters I ever had with the Lord during communion was with the elements I had in a prison cell. This might mess up some religious people. I'm just telling you, I had an encounter with the Lord when he told me he wanted me to have communion with him. And I said, all I've got is part of a Susie Q and a watered down Diet Pepsi. He, says, you have, he said, you have the elements. And I said, all I've got is this. He <laughs> says, that will be sufficient. God will change anything. I'm not saying that you... Do the Suzy Q and Watered Down Diet Pepsi Communion. Don't make that the, 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 the staple item. Make it the exception to the rule. I haven't done that since. But when I partook of his body and his blood, Jesus came into that prison cell. Like few times I've ever encountered him doing communion. This time of Thanksgiving, remember the Via de Rosa, the way of suffering. Thank he bore Jesus. it every step for those that mocked him and were crying out for his death. Today, Lord, we come back 
to give you thanks for the things you've done, for sustaining us through three years of this very odd time in the world, for sustaining us through political morass, family division and strife, financial ups and downs, health issues, but we're still here instead of blaming or complaining. We come to the office of Thanksgiving and we thank you today for your body broken for us. We don't go to the king's horses or the king's men today, the psychologist or the psychiatrist or the doctor or the lawyer or the senator. We come to you, the king himself. And we say, Lord, we partake of your body broken for us that we might be made whole. We come back to give us thanks, to give you thanks. And we thank you for making us whole right now. Let's partake. And Lord, we thank you for the things that we don't even know that you did. Where you averted disaster for us, you protected us, you insulated us. Our angels were at work. We thank you for the angels assigned to our lives. Thank you for provision. And Lord, I thank you for showing us the things, even in dreams and visions, after this communion and after tonight and the days ahead, the things you've done for us, that we might give you thanks. Because we choose to be the one out of the 10 that comes back and falls at your feet, Master. And we give you thanks. We cry out with a loud voice and we proclaim it from the rooftops that Jesus is King. Yes. We thank you thank for you healing Jesus. us and now for making us whole as we partake of your blood shed for us. In Jesus' name. He was bleeding from a beating. There were stripes upon his back. He bore a crown of thorns upon his head, and he bore it every step for those who cried out for his death. Down the Via Dolorosa, called the way of suffering, came a man called the Messiah Christ, the King El Rey Señor. And he bore it every step for those who cried out for his death. Mm. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Jesus. To the office of thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. And amen. Lord, I thank you. You're not going to have to strike the rocks to cry out and praise you. We praise you. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving and happy Thanksgiving every day of the year as you have an invitation to the office of Thanksgiving like the one leper who came back and gave thanks and wasn't just healed, but was made so so whole. Shalom to you this day. God bless. Shalom. Shalom. My shalom. My wife, Joanna, and I'm David. Dr. David Herobedian and Joanna Herobedian, Virtual Church Media. God bless you. See you next time.